Okay. All right. Good evening, everybody. Um, this is the Conservation Commission meeting for January 18th, 2023, starting at 7.04. Um, tonight we have myself, Kathy Demers, Carol Jordan, Bob Shabbat, uh, Jackie Kulig, and Nora Jones, our alternate. Somebody want to make a motion to seat Nora? So moved. Who would who do you want to seat her for? Uh, Bob for Marilyn or for Patty? Uh, for Marilyn. Okay. All in favor? Say uh, aye. Aye. <clears throat> Any opposition? Okay. So moved. Um, first item: approval of minutes from November sixteenth. Does anybody want to make a motion on that? So moved. Okay, a second. Any any second on that? Oh, if I can Carol. second, I can second. I'll okay. second if I can second. Okay, thank you, Nora. Um, Carol, I I think you're muted. I see you're you were talking, but uh, I think you're still muted. Okay, I didn't know I was muted. Great. All right. Any discussion on the minutes? There's one typo on the back, but I don't think that's a great moment. It should be on the article on the section about collaborative organizations. It should say plan of conservation and development rather than conservation of development. Oh, okay. But it's a minor, but I think that's just a minor critical error. So I don't think it's a okay. moment in terms of approving the minutes. Okay. Thanks for um, letting me know about that, though. Thank you. All right. Um, all in favor of the minutes as written, say aye. aye. Any aye. Any abstentions? Aye. Okay. I wasn't there. Okay. Thanks, Jackie. I'm just writing as we go here. Okay, great. Uh, present to speak doesn't appear to be anyone. Uh, finance, Carol, you have a report for us. Uh, yeah, the the um, expenditures to date. My glasses back on. Huh? Um, expenditures to date are three hundred and twelve dollars and eighty four cents, leaving a balance of eleven eighty seven sixteen unspent. Um, the expenses were um, payments to Kathy for cider and uh, for to Willard's for um, bridge repair materials. Okay, thank you. So they they've totally got a. Um, a prompt payment payment discount from Willard. So the total amount spent, Kathy, on that was one hundred and thirty four dollars and eighty seven cents. So there's enough. There's still money left in the appropriation of two hundred dollars uh, for for those purposes. Okay, so we'd have another sixty five dollars still available from that. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Okay. Yep. Okay. Thanks. All right. Um, let's talk about our twenty three twenty four budget request, uh, which is due by February 9th. Um, Carol, do you want to talk a bit, a little bit about our, our current budget and what we've asked for in the past? <laughs> oh, I sent out something to people. I don't know if they got it. Um, that I printed out for myself. So it looks like this. That's a, sort of a summary of what we've spent over the years. And um, we've had at looking, I, I eliminated to some earlier years, but starting with the 2010-11 fiscal year we asked for 2000 that year and only spent um, 700 of it following year we asked for 1800 and only spent a little over 1200 of it and then every year since 2012 13 we have got had a budget of 1500 dollars so there's not ex exactly been any inflationary trending in the funding from the town okay great all right does anybody have some thoughts on um what we should ask for this coming year we don't the have same. the same. <laughs> we we do have money in the ARP from the ARPA fund that we can use for um, materials for trails as well. So there's thirty five hundred dollars we have appropriated in there for the next few years that we can use. So we could draw on that if necessary. Um, but we do we will have some expenses. Well, this that they'll come out of this year though for the signage and that sort of thing. 
Right. right. Yeah. But um, if you if you look at the what we spent um, last year was one hundred and sixty dollars for memberships. There was about a little over eight fifty for um, the parks. Um, two hundred dollars for outreach. It was one hundred and fifty for the guided hike, and fifty dollars for the daily award, and then about uh, just under two hundred and fifty dollars for the the Girl Scout pollinated garden in the park. Under um, so that's that's where our money went last year. Um, in prior years, we've in the the year before we spent um, only three hundred eighty five dollars on the parks and one hundred thirty on outreach. So. Um, and a total of, we had a balance of $844, whereas this past year we had a balance of $36.84. So, you know, it's, a, it's variable, but the if you look at the, this, you get, the, I don't know if any, apparently nobody downloaded it. So, um, if you, you know, but with the, the bulk of the expenditures tend to be um, for the parks. I don't know if there'll be any costs. We want to update the open space map, but that depends on my. Um, ability, my willingness to um, to work on on updating the map, and I don't. There probably would not be much in the way of costs associated with that, since we work through um, Mike Cipriano, who's the map person at um, Krog. On that. Okay. Anybody else have any thoughts about um, after it would be after June of this year, we would be starting to use that new budget. Any ideas what we might, other ideas that we might use money for um, after June? You want to uh, consider having somebody mark the boundaries of the new acquisition instead of having us go down. Uh, we've done that in the past, hired somebody mm -hmm. to, to blaze the uh, boundaries. Okay. Well, I can I can tell you that Chris and I did go out with some of the um, signs, the boundary signs, and put them up on the new property because we've been working out there, clearing up the tires and all that stuff. So we did take time to just put them along where the survey, because the surveyor's tape and everything's out there. It was very simple. Right. So, yeah. But we might want to think about um, doing some boundary surveys for some of our other properties that we manage. Uh, Jackie, I know you've done that for us in the past. Is that something you might be available to do? Uh, so I'm actually, I'm not running my forestry business anymore. So um, I wouldn't really be able to take on like work, but I can try to do as much as I can just as a member. Um, but yeah, it wouldn't be really something to budget for. Okay. All right. Any other thoughts? Um, what uh, I, I I don't know if it comes under our preview or not, but the uh, hayfield that's on the west side of uh, the road, the uh, the treed area up and beyond that, mm -hmm. would it be worthwhile having somebody come in and? give us an, uh, an idea of how much timber is in there so we could maybe uh, nudge the town into doing a timber harvest on that parcel hmm. Hmm. No, we uh, to answer to your question Bob we don't we don't have management authority on that on the parcel on the other side of the road uh, that's specifically for uh, general purposes of the town hmm. according to the deed it's a separate deed. And, um, and we could make a recommendation to the town that they might consider doing some forestry there, but sure. uh, we, we don't, but we don't have management authority, no. Okay. 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 All right. Well, um, barring no other suggestions, um, does anybody want to make a motion on our budget for 23-24? I'd make a motion that we uh, ask for a budget of uh, fifteen hundred dollars. Okay. Do I hear a second? I'll second. Okay. Thank you. Any more discussion? Okay. Hearing none. All in favor of that motion, say aye. 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 Opposed. Abstained. So moved. Thank you. Okay. 
All right. Um, um, go ahead, Kathy. Kathy before we leave that, um, I believe it is our understanding, even though we haven't got formally gotten any materials from the from the finance department or the board of finance, um, that I did talk with a while ago with with uh, Donald Latinchik, who had the schedule of hearings on the budget, and um, they will be hearing from us on fe February 16th and want the budget proposal a week before that. Um, and I'll try and prepare the budget proposal, but I'm not sure whether I'll be available to speak to that. So, um, and uh, what we usually do is we've divided the, the a total amount of the budget between memberships and conference uh, conferences, programs and outreach, trail parks and trail ma maintenance. And we had put up open space monitoring on there um, in prior years, um, but we may, you know, we could some other, if anybody has any other thoughts uh, on things that, that, um, that come under the category of our statutory responsibilities or our management duty, duties that you'd like to see me highlight. Basically, we, we sort of put it, give it out, uh, split out the estimated uh, expenditures and it's more a way of reminding them of what it is we do and what we need money for. Um, and, but we can spend the full allotment any way we want as long as we don't exceed it. So if anybody has any thoughts or um, any particular areas they would like me to emphasize in putting the budget proposal together, uh, please let me know. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Carol. And, and you and I can be in touch too. We can talk about the 16th and, you know, if you're not available, you know, I can be available or, you know, it's $1,500. If we don't show up, I don't think we're going to have any concern if about it. <laughs> they have nothing to complain about. I think we should, <clears throat> I think we should be asking for more, but maybe they would value us more if we did, if we valued ourselves more. <laughs> um. Okay, the other item I had under finance is just the CIP request. Um, Bob and I did go in person tonight to the CIP meeting and we did present our uh, request for the $30,000 a year for five years. And um, there were a lot of good questions. Um, I think um, certainly there's some, several people on the CIP um, committee that are, um, advocates and supportive of what we do. Um, and um, so we'll have to see what, what comes out, you know, when they uh, decide on that. But Bob, do you have any other thoughts about the meeting tonight, the CIP? No, I think they were receptive to what we were talking about. And I think they understood um, why. Um, you know, I'm sure, you know, it's gonna be a, a mixed decision. They have to have their conversation. Uh, you know, we may get less than we asked for. Uh, I think we're, we'd be successful if we get something every year for the five years. Uh, at this point, that's the goal that I think uh, is our, uh, a positive benchmark. Mm -hmm. Well, they obviously are, are a lot of competing interests, particularly with all the issues around the schools. Um, and, and that's that's going to be we certainly have a, a major financial impact on the town. So, you know, that's, that may have an effect on, on other issues, other um, areas as well. Yeah, I think Bob and I made a case that we want to be able to have more money in the open space fund so we can be a bit more proactive about um, working with other land trusts, um, and, you know, landowners, if we see a key parcel that we feel comfortable maybe approaching them to talk about what they might have in mind for their property. Um, without having some money in a fund, it's very hard to reach out to landowners when you don't even know if you're going to be able to get any type of funding uh, to make a purchase or to help them with a conservation easement. So, um, and we did talk about the values of open space um, in terms of economic value that when you um, keep property open rather than having it develop, it actually costs the town less because whenever you develop property, the town ends up paying more than they actually get back in taxes. So, and we talked about the environmental uh, benefits to um, clean water, air, 
public recreation. Gosh, Kathy, this sounds familiar. Have we ever done this before? <laughs> it's all in the grass. Like every right? year for a long time. So, but yeah. I, you know, but but there were people actually on the CIP uh, committee that uh, were parroting the same thing, and they were talking about that too, and um, telling you know each other some of the newer members that were on the the commission mm -hmm. um, or the committee, um, you know, some of the values and and all the good work that we've done. So that was very positive. Good. Yeah, well, should, yeah. we we do good work. <laughs> good work, we do. We try. We try. Uh, old business, um, Talmadge Estate property. So I had sent some information to you about uh, the survey. Um, when the surveyor finally did review the survey in December, um, he wanted more information that had to be provided on the survey. He wants some handwritten coordinates that can help to tie in the survey to the um, NAD 83 grid. It's just a GPS locating type of uh, system. They're trying to um, make things better in terms of locating properties. So I did reach out to Mike D'Amato who reached out to Gardner and Peterson and they said that to be able to do the extra work would cost $1,500. Um, I did talk to Erica and um, because we had a certain amount of money appropriated from the open space fund, so up to $60,000 we could use toward this purchase. Yeah, uh, the, the project is not closed out yet. And, and all of the money that was appropriated by the town for, for um, the, ex, the expenses, um, after covering the cost of the purchase of the prop purchase price of the property is still available for our use until we run out of it. And I think we have adequate funds to cover that. Yes. So, so there shouldn't be that. any problem. And um, we don't, she didn't need to um, go to the board of selectmen to authorize that. So that was great. Um, so we did um, give Gardner Peterson the green light to move forward. So they'll be working on that. Once they update the survey, we'll get it back to the state and then the state will review it and um, get back to us. And once we get through that hoop, the next step is we have to um, update the title search and um, the title insurance to include the, to the state. And then after that part, once they've reviewed all that, they're going to come back with the conservation easement agreement that um, their um, attorney general from the state actually prepares and reviews and then gets back to the state to the town to sign. So we've got. We've got some more hoops to jump through before we actually receive the the grant, but um, we're moving. Is that by next, uh, by this August at least? <laughs> they don't give you any kind of an idea. I mean, it took the <laughs> it took their surveyors six months to review our survey. Mm -hmm. I mean, we sent yeah. it in June and they didn't get back to us to December. So and, and yeah. the uh, one of the prior purchases, it took several two or three years before we finally got the money. Um, yeah. So it, it's and and a lot of it is is because of of um, lack of staffing at um, at deep and, mm -hmm. sure. and and also you know the just red tape. Yeah. So, um, well, good. You know, we closed on the property, so that's that's good, and we can move forward to work on trails and such. Um, as I mentioned, um, the boundary markers are up. Um, the um, site has been cleaned of the tires and some of there was some old garden fencing and things like that and the old uh, old truck parts and all of that's gone now. Um, so deep can come out. They're supposed to come out once they've gone through all the other stuff. They have to come out and look at the site and make sure all that stuff is gone. So that'll be one more thing they'll do. Um, we need to talk about a couple of things, um, including the signage. Um, I did send out kind of a draft uh, that Chris had worked on for us and, um, you know, for your feedback. It's very similar to the original sign, except that it, it now includes Eleanor, uh, Eleanor's name. And Carol and I discussed this yesterday, um, the old sign. Well, maybe I should speak to this issue, Kathy, because I was the one that got stuck in the okay. final stages of negotiating the purchase and sales agreement. Okay. Um, but I, uh, in addition to the language that's in the purchase and sales agreement itself, um, I have 
a chain of emails back and forth between the various parties. And it is very clear that we promised and the, the family requested and we promised signage showing both names on both the um, old property and the new property. So we were obliged to do that. Um, this was something that I discussed when, with Pete and Kathy at the time when I could reach them, um, which was not always. So um, this, but there is a clear, it, it was very clear um, in, uh, that from their attorney that this was something that was very important to them. And we, are, we intend to, the, what was conveyed to them was that the Conservation Commission intends to treat this as a single parcel in terms of, of, of uh, how, it's, uh, how it's, uh, it's named and, uh, and how we administer it. Um, the only reason it's be in two parcels is because the two acquisitions require signage by the, uh, separately by the state because they were uh, the money was provided under different grant programs. Mm -hmm. So the, this is not optional. We have to do signage and we have to do it for both properties. Great. So we'll be uh, moving forward to um, get both signs, you know, the new sign and then replacing the old sign and uh, ensure that Eleanor's name is on both. Right. Um, and the first sign the for the original, because at the time that we got the grant, the name of DEEP was DEP at the time. <laughs> so that, that sign will be a little bit different than the one I sent out to you. Right. The other one looks very nice, actually. Yeah, I really like the, the yeah. appearance of the sign. It looks good. But it, it, I, I was looking at the picture you sent today of the old sign, and it, it, it doesn't require the seal. Right. Does it, did, did it does have a picture? It didn't, at the time when we got the grant in 2006, it didn't require the logo on it. Yeah. So, and we didn't put it on it, but we did acknowledge DEP at the time. Right, exactly. Yeah. So that sign that we're replacing probably should just say, you know, the Department of um, Environmental Protection. And we do have their old logo. I mean, we could put it on there <laughs> because we have it on the Knowlton sign. It, you know, if we're going to, update the sign well. yeah and and um we will ne need to to slightly change the word the, the the layout in order to accommodate the the, ne the name change right so i did um kind of sent i sent the draft to um signs of all kinds and also um fast signs in manchester who made the sign for the pollinator garden just to get a general idea of what the cost would be to have the, the new signs made. And signs of all kinds came back with um, a bid basically of $100 for the new sign. And that includes all the new artwork. And um, fast signs came back with a quote of $185. So those were the, the two things. It was worth, worth looking. Yeah, it was worth looking. So um, I think, I mean, in general, the signs have held up really well. Oh, I know. I'm not not criticizing. <laughs> no, I'm just no, saying no. That, 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 you know, since we had experience with a different sign company, it seemed like, yeah. who knows, they might have come in. If they came, had come in lower, maybe, we, <laughs> but that's different. Mm -hmm. But they didn't, so, you know, and we've had good uh, service for over the years from from signs of all kinds. So. Yes, we, we have. Um, so, I don't know if people want to go forward and at least order one of the signs, or I can make another mock-up of the second sign, the, the replacement sign, and send that out to everybody. Um, if we want to make a motion to set aside some money for this um, and move forward on that, I don't know how long it's going to take to make the sign. I imagine you know we'll get it in a few weeks once we order it. They're going to have to do the mock-up send it back to us, get approval for the mock-up, and then we have to send a deposit of 50%. Um, Kathy, uh, what what uh, timeline are you looking at in terms of a dedication? Well, I was going to talk about that tonight and see what people were thinking. I would like to think we could do this in the spring. Um, I was thinking either in May or June, we could do it for Trails Day, which is June 3rd and 4th. We could do it one of those weekend days. But I was going to talk to the Talmadge family, too, and see when 
maybe the majority of their family members might be available. Yeah. Okay. Cause, yeah. I mean, we have we have more time than that, but but I, I think it's all it's something we all want to want to uh, to do as soon as possible. Yeah. I mean, this the, we have to change the sign regardless of even if we were having <laughs> right. dedication. But, oh. but that's and, that that if that gives us something to shoot for. Yeah. So did anybody have thoughts um, on the dedication? Um, you know, we, what we've done in the past is, you know, had a little gathering at the trailhead, talking about the property, talking about, um, you know, the open space grant that we've received. We usually invite uh, public officials like, you know, the first selectman, the state representative, um, state senator for Willington, um, mm -hmm. and of course the family and then the general public. Um, and then we kind of open things up, take a hike, and uh, you know, just have a nice uh, morning of it. So, mm -hmm. yeah. How um, so? If you would like, I can get, I can reach out to the Talmadge family and ask them. I can maybe give them a couple of dates, um, including some in May and June, and see. You know, I tell them we would. I I would love to have it on. Trails Day, you know, Connecticut Trails Day, third or the fourth. How are people's schedules then? I know that's way ahead, but trouble with Trails Day is that that there's so many <laughs> events that day that uh, things get spread pretty pretty thin. Um, yeah. So, you know, I don't. I, I might make better sense to have it on uh, if it's if we want to focus on the dedication of the property. Maybe perhaps not <laughs> not on that day because. So many people are out walking um, a variety of places. And, and when we've had events in town ourselves, we found sometimes they're poorly attended for that very reason because there's so much competition on that on that weekend. So that's just a, something to consider as well. Mm -hmm. I'd agree with Carol on that, Kathy. Okay. So we'll avoid that weekend then. I think so. And any, well, Jackie, Nora, do you have any thoughts or ideas on that? Just um, just that I, I pretty, um, starting early May, I, I don't really have weekends available. Okay. Farm, farm, okay. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> and checking, checking with the family. Okay. Yeah. I can hear you, Nora. I can read your lips. I'll do that. <laughs> um, do we want to make a motion about expending some money for the signs. I'm assuming, you know, the other sign is going to be about a hundred dollars. There's not much difference there. Um, we could, we could even authorize an expenditure expenditure up to $250. Why don't we, why don't we just approve an expenditure uh, for two signs uh, for, 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 for uh, a, a sign for the new Talmadge parcel, the new portion of the Talmadge tract and the, and a replacement sign for the old portion of the Talmadge tract with, um, with a proper wording. And um, we, we know approximately what it's gonna cost. It will cost somewhere in the range of, of two, um, 250 to $300 probably, but I don't know that we need to put a dollar amount. I think we can just authorize at this point when we've got uh, so much over 1100 left in the budget, we could safely just say, do the signs and, um, Okay. And come in, at, knowing that we have an estimated cost that's that's that would only expend maximum of a third of the remaining funds. Okay, so you want to authorize an expenditure for the? No, you know, I wouldn't. I don't. Wouldn't put a dollar amount. Just oh, authorize. Uh, authorize the uh, to uh, oh. getting the new signs. Oh, okay. Just authorize buying uh, purchase of purchase. Uh, Purchase of okay of the uh, sign is of two signs um, for for um, the Talmadge conservation tract. One for for the newly acquired property and one replacement sign with the correct naming name of the uh, of the property. And we can put in estimated cost. Um, why don't we do just double the quote we have for the original sign and, and say estimated cost um, 
of 250 just to or 300 why well, whether they want what quote 150 for one side no 100 oh just 100 oh yeah right. well, but you know again i that, don't well know. or just say let's just say just do a blanket motion to authorize uh the signage okay the purchase of two new signs do you carol would you be willing to write that up and send it to me the way you would like it worded for the motion I, I hear what I you're can, saying. Yeah, I can, I can read it. Yeah. Just okay. Like All right. So does anybody, um, so Carol has a motion on the floor. Do I hear a I'll, second? I'll second. Okay. Any more discussion? All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Aye. So moved. Okay. Thanks. All right, Carol, I appreciate that. All right, um, so the new trail. Um, Chris and I had started to kind of lay something out based on looking at the original idea we had of going out toward the hill and back. And then we found that you could actually make a nice lollipop trail out of it by going up the hill and getting to that view, like a little bit of a view shed from the top of the hill. But you could also go down, back down around and in front of it and around um, onto an old woods road and come back. Um, and it, it seemed to be about a mile long when we kind of flagged it out. So I had Jackie come back out. And uh, this weekend, she took a, a look at it with me. And um, Jackie, I don't know if you want to make any comments about what you thought or yeah, it, I, I thought it covered the property pretty nicely and it, it um, goes up onto the peak. Um, and yeah, I thought it, it was nice, a nice gradual trail and would work out well. You didn't get lost, did you? <laughs> no, it was very well flagged. Okay, just wondering. <laughs> There's not a lot of work either removing any, you know, there's no large trees to remove oh, good. for sure. A uh, little bit of, um, you know, saplings here and there, but it, it should be pretty easy. And there, believe it or not, there are not going to need be need for any bridges. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so Jackie and I talked That's a little disappointing. bit. Oh, <laughs> he would be disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> he would be very disappointed. Um, so Jackie said she'd be willing to go back out and um, kind of uh, get it down on GPS and measure it out. And then also to put it on our new, make a new map mm -hmm. that we can add so we can have that at the trailhead um, mm -hmm. along with the other trails. We will have to just update some of those. We had signs made. I don't know if you remember, they're like vinyl coated signs. And mm -hmm. we put them at all the trailheads. And so we would uh, update those once Jackie finishes with that mapping. Yeah, and in line with that, we should also make an make up a new brochure um, and uh, for for those for the Knowlton and Talmage properties. Then it would be nice to be able to I don't know, I don't know about the expense of including a colored map in the in the brochures, but we could adapt it to a black and white map to put with the with the brochure itself and and we need to revise the text as well to go along with that. Mm -hmm. Would anybody be interested or willing to work on that part of it, updating the brochure? I can't even think about doing anything more than I'm doing right now, but later maybe. Okay. All right, well, that'll be on the agenda next time. We'll, we can talk about that. Um, and then uh, we need two other things. Uh, we need to come up with a name for the trail and a paint color. So, uh, um, what colors are what what, what colors are we uh, are we using now? The Talmadge the Talmadge Spur Trail is yellow and blue. Yeah, and I mean we could just use yellow because then because the trail is also going to have a little connection to the Talmadge Spur, so you don't have to walk on the road. Mm -hmm. okay, so you'll come out the parking lot, you go right across from the parking lot, that's where the new trail starts, mm -hmm. and it will head left toward the hill, but it also ha will have a little jog on the right. That right. Will so you can get to, 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 to the existing Talmadge Pro Trail. Yeah, right. that's, yeah, that's a great plan. 
there's no yellow out um, on any of the other trails out there. So that would be, you know, its own yellow. It's, it's all blue and, and red and, and the other colors associated with it are yellow and red, aren't they? Uh, blue and white on the town and okay. the Knowlton Spur. And of course the Nipmuc's blue. And then there's the red trail, which is the one that's off the Nipmuc that goes down on the Yukon property. Yeah, that goes out down to the Hemlock. Right. Yeah, down to the river. Yeah. 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 So they but so you've so we've you got blue, white, yellow, and red. So maybe I don't know. We've got we've got green paint for Mandarin Fed and Ruby if we wanted, if we wanted to use that. We could think about that. Well, yeah, well, I mean we we still have time to think about it. Um you know, again, I was thinking yellow just because it'd be a standalone yellow and it would be off the yellow and blue trail anyway. Oh, so. Fine, whatever. I don't know, anybody else? Yeah, I think it, when we were looking at the map out there, it seemed like yellow would kind of make sense because all the other trails that are a color and blue connect to the Nipmuc Trail. Yeah. This yeah. one doesn't, but it can to the yellow and blue trail so just, <laughs> which is yeah. makes a lot of sense jackie you're right yeah yeah i think some of the maps some of the properties are kind of colored in a greenish blue you know they're highlighted so green might be a little harder to see as a trail mm. yeah. yeah that's true uh, but it, but also uh, jackie the the colors in that map could be modified too because they were you know, were designed to to really highlight the parcel that was that was being pur purchased, and and perhaps um, we might want to to think about modifying that a bit because we want to emphasize that this is all one one tract for for manage by for naming and management purposes. Um, yeah, I, I think but, you're referring to the map that we used for the grant application. The grant, yeah, that was an orange. Yeah, yeah at the time. Yeah, yeah. So that so that so that the whole the, the whole Talmadge tract as it is now defined would be all the same color. Okay. Okay, so paint color, yellow is okay? Yep. Okay. Sure. All right, ideas for a name for the trail? Because Jack, when Jackie does the mapping, she's gonna have to put a name on it. Now, How about the yellow trail? <laughs> <laughs> that would be really good. I don't know. <laughs> we, got, we could try. We could create some issues within the Talmadge family, maybe by by asking them to select it. <laughs> select oh. it. We should call it Eleanor's Trail. <laughs> I don't know. I have no idea. Um, I, but I, I was kind of thinking something that would give people the no, idea. It would be not be unprecedented after. to have it named after a relative because it's uh, you know. That was done at, at, at Fenton Ruby with the in the drop in the dropping sanctuary portion of the park. I one of the thoughts I had was because we're it's going out to the hilltop. I you know some of you um, have Jackie and I've been out on the property. Has anybody else been out there? Uh, a a number of, number of years ago, I walked it several times. Okay, I mean if you want to take time to get out there and just follow some of the flags, it's pretty easy. Um, it brings you up to a hilltop knoll where yes. there's a, some bedrock mm -hmm. outcropping and you have a, you know, a little bit of a vista, not really way in the distance when the trees are in um, it leafed out, but you can see down all around you, you can see down to the vernal pool. Um, one of my thoughts was to name the trail something that would give people the idea that there was some kind of a hill or a vista, you know, mm -hmm. that, that they're heading to. Um, you know, Vista Trail or Hilltop Trail. Like it's Hilltop not trail. too long either. <laughs> so <laughs> make signs. <laughs> yeah. Well, it, it might be interesting to to talk with some of the members of the family and uh, about their. I know that uh, they have a lot of associations. And I remember Dennis Point was talking about tramping around. He spent years tramping around those woods. Um, you know. Yeah, I mean, so they, I, they are, you know, I, I get what you're saying, Carol. Um, I'd be a little reticent to ask the family to weigh in because it could start some issues because there's been some things in the past. Yes. So um, maybe we should just pick a name. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> but it's, how, it will it'll be that? interesting at the dedication to have for them to for talk about their experiences with the property because I know it's it's uh, that that they were very fond of that property and um, it was important to them. Yeah. How about if we cut off all the trees in the in that highest spot and called it Bald Hill? <laughs> Oh, well, there you go. Oh. Well, you want to give How us about a treetop trail. <laughs> It'd be alliterative. <laughs> if I get a chance in the next week or so, if it doesn't snow, I might take a walk out. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> maybe you get a feel for something by being out there. I mean, we don't have to come up with the name now. You know, Jackie's no. not going to be right out there, and um, it'll take some time to get it on a map anyway. So. Yeah, when I've walked it, it's been in the summertime, so I'm camouflaged. So oh. uh, it'll probably, I'm sure it's different now with the, uh, without the leaves. Yeah, it's amazing how much it, things change with when the leaves are off and you go, oh, gee, I didn't know that was there. <laughs> yeah. 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 All right. So we'll, we'll table the name. We got a paint color. Mm -hmm. Probably try to brush it out a little bit um, and work on the trail, you know, getting everything done in the in the blazes on it by late April, something in there. Okay. Um, one other thing. So as far as paint goes, when I had gone to Willard's the last time, it's $25 a quart. And that's why I didn't buy all three colors at the time I was looking for red, white, and blue. Um, mm. we didn't have enough in the, in the expenditure. Um, and we're now going to need yellow. So that'll be a hundred dollars worth of paint. We already have $65 still appropriated from the last, um, time we voted. We didn't spend everything on the $200. So do we want to make an appropriation for another hundred dollars? Okay. Yeah, that would bring the available funds to 165 and that would allow for but that but that that allow uh, for some hardware for mounting the um, the sign. Yeah, yeah. The sign. I think that would be more than enough, Carol. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Kathy. How how about uh, buying a rattle can of like ky Krylon uh, yellow, and uh, you know you have to go easy the first coat or two, but uh, I don't think you have the waste that you have when you're dipping a brush into the uh, pot all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, as long as that rattle can stored in a warm place, it's usually good for a year or two. And after we get a couple coats on all those all the trees where we need, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we always can just go out and buy another rattle can for what eight bucks, okay. eight or twelve bucks. Okay, we could consider that. Have you ever used it for tree marking? Does it? I have two questions. One is it going to make kind of a nice rectangle? Um, and if, you if, put it, if you put a mask on the tree, a what? A stencil? A mask, like a, a stencil, stencil Bob? on the tree? A yeah. stencil. Okay. Um, have you done it or tried it before? Because you know, putting I've, I've a stencil. Used, yeah. I, I've used it on wood, on on chairs and stuff like that. Yeah. It sprays. I mean, it sprays and it, it it doesn't run if you just watch yourself. And with a with a stencil, I mean, you can push it pretty close. You're going to get a little blow blowout around the edges, but it's no big deal. Okay. Well, you know what? Let me. I'm gonna. I'll make a stencil and I'll try it on some trees in my own yard and just see, you know, how that works. Because I have some, you know, Krylon paint here. I'll I'll try it and see how it holds. How the stencil does with the bark? Because sometimes bark is so rough. Um, or so it's still, it's, it'll fill in. And if you do that, do it near the road so we know where to turn into your driveway. <laughs> I was thinking of doing it. I'm going to do it on the back side of the tree so I don't have to look at it after. No, it's just easy. It's the one with the poorest paving. <laughs> it's, a, it's a way to recognize your driveway. <laughs> um, so can I hear, do we want to have a motion for an expenditure of up to an additional $100? Just so in case. Almost. So moved. Okay. And second. Okay. Do I hear a second? Uh, Nora, thank you. Okay. Oh, okay. Nora did. She was flagging, flagging her hand. Um, all in favor, say aye. Aye. 
Right. Any opposition? Aye. Abstention? Okay, so move. All right, thank you. Um, moving on to Fenton Ruby for property under properties managements. Um, Chris and I noticed um, back in late November that three of the signs were missing when we took some hikes out there. Um, the Taylor Pond Trail sign at the second en entrance or exit, whatever you want to call it. Another Taylor Pond Trail sign by Julia's Trail where this you come off of Julia's and you see it says Taylor Pond, that was missing. Mm -hmm. And the Ruby Connector Trail was missing off of the Taylor Pond Trail. Um, so I don't know why people decided to take those. We did, since then, we have found that one of them came back and was leaning at the base of the Taylor Pond Trail second entrance. So I don't know if somebody took it and threw it in the woods and somebody found it. But anyway, long story short, Chris made up some new signs and we have signs on all the posts again. So I just wanted to let you know, though, that we somebody had taken some signs. So um, Bob and I met with Troy from Public Works and um, we walked out to show him all the invasive plants around the edges of the hayfield to see if there's something that Public Works could help us with. And um, he said that they did have some new mowing equipment now that could actually get out there and cut everything down to the ground. Uh, we would have to do it annually. And he said that uh, Public Works would be willing to do that. And as soon as the ground freezes, at the time it was kind of frozen, but since then it's kind of thawed again, he said that they would get out there and cut all the invasive plants along the hayfield edges. So that was really nice to hear because um, that would have been beyond what a, a group of volunteers could have done. Um, I think I sent you an email about an issue with trespassing on a neighboring posted property from the park. Uh, I spoke to the landowner and um, I told him, you know, what we could do is just put up a sign in the kiosk and along the boundary next close to where the Julius Trail goes, um, just asking people to stay on the trail and not cross onto uh, private property. So we did put some signs up to that effect. Um, I wanted to mention uh, the bench on Julius Trail. Um, back when we had had um, the uh, party for Peter when he was leaving. Um, Mark Drobny had talked to Chris because Chris had told him he was making a bench. And Mark ended up saying that he would donate a sign to put on the bench um, that if, you know, in terms of dedicating the bench, because I know P Peter had worked with Chris out there on the trails. And Chris wanted to put a bench out on Julia's trail, looking over the river, um, kind of honoring Peter and the work that he's done. So anyway, long story short, Mark made up a plaque and Chris attached it to the bench. And this is what it says. This Leopold bench is dedicated to Peter Anderson in recognition, in recognition of his service to the Willington CC 1998 to 2022. So that's on the bench that's on Julie's trail now. Mm. So, and Mark donated it. He offered to make it. So um, park, other park issues, the chestnut trees um, that we had bought back in 2018 and, and Jackie had planted for us. They're really thriving. They're doing really well. I don't know if you've seen them in the park. One is out on the timber harvest site. So that's not so visible, but you know, Chris and I have gone out there several times and it's looking very healthy. And um, I'd like to suggest that we purchase two more of the, the trees this year. And so we can plant them next to the ones that are already growing because they need to be within you know, 30, 40 feet of each other to pollinate. Um, and I wonder what you thought about that. I, I did check on prices and if we got them from Dunstan, like we did in the past, um, a one and a half year old tree, it would be bare root tree. They ship them out in the spring. Their price on that is $37 a piece. 
And if you wanted to ship two of them, that would cost 70, almost $74. And then shipping is $22. So the total comes out to $96.40 if we wanted to purchase two of them and have them shipped uh, in the spring. So what do people think about that? We got a month to spend there somehow. Idea. Yeah, as long as there's room in the picnic area. Okay. I didn't hear that. Jackie, can you say it again? Um, yeah, I, I said that I thought it was a good idea as long as there's a spot in the picnic area. I, I think we can find a place out in the woods um, for that second tree. Um, but yeah, just as, as long as we're not crowding the lawn too much with another tree. Okay. We did have the apple tree die um, that's right out in the front. Um, I don't know, you know, you can't plant it right on top of the stump, obviously, but we could think about maybe in that area or closer mm -hmm. to the river. Um, if you're familiar with that backside of the, um, the property, uh, it's probably within 50, 60 feet, you know, the edge um, from the other chestnut tree. So. If, uh, yeah, I was actually, I was reading the distance. I think it's something like 40 feet that's recommended between the trees. I'll okay. have to look at it again. Okay. Go ahead, uh, Bob. What? What if we ask Troy if when they're doing road work or something, they have their uh, backhoe down there? Mm -hmm. See if he could uh, right. pop that stump out with the backhoe. Huh. Okay. And then they'd probably end up having to fill it because there's not going to be any soil there to fill it in. Right? Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, I don't know, put something in there, must have some scrapings on this from the side of the road or some where something got rutted. I mean, I think they have a stockpile of uh, topsoil that they use for uh, filling in behind the uh, edging, the curbing that they, uh, mm -hmm. the asphalt curbing they put down. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um yeah, we, I, we could ask them. I imagine they wouldn't want to start doing that until the spring. Well, the if they're there, I mean, the frost isn't going to be a deterrent for a, a backhoe, you know, especially this winter. I mean, we're, if, you know, if it, if it ever turns cold, there's, there's practically <laughs> no frost in the ground now. If there's a couple mm -hmm. inches, you're doing good. Okay. Just, I'm just going to throw this out, just thinking ahead when this tree, when we're all dead and this tree is 50 years old, are we going to have chestnuts um, kind of spreading out onto the gravel road? You know, like, because it's fairly, that apple tree was fairly close to the road and imagine the chestnut trees are going to get pretty large. Sounds like the basis for a poem to me. <laughs> We won't be here to worry about it, but <laughs> no. <laughs> somebody else's problem. <laughs> we won't be losing any sleep over it, will we? <laughs> no, no. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I think it. I think it sounds like a good idea. But but we don't have to make a decision tonight. But I, you know, if it, if the estimated cost is about a hundred bucks, we certainly can. I think we'll be able to afford it um, okay. when this when it, when we get close enough to plan it. What would I don't know what, what good planting time would be. Yeah, well, they, yeah, go ahead. They ship, they usually ship um, between end of April and mid-May and it's mm -hmm. bare root. So we'd have to get it in the ground, you know, fairly shortly yeah. after that. Right. Yeah. Okay. Be that's because, it's, because it's an open area, Kathy, mm -hmm. my suggestion would be if you're, you want to think about the road and uh, and the tree in 40 or 50 years, when it starts growing, we can just limb it up so that there's no uh, horizontal limbs the first six, seven feet. 
So you're not going to have, you know, a lolly, you know, it'll, it'll go up straight before the branches start going out. So you'll have an upright trunk and it won't start spreading very low. And that'll, that, that way you don't have to come back later and remove large branches after the fact. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Yeah, it was just, I mean, I was, just, I was, go ahead, Jack. Uh, yeah, I was just going to mention, I was planning for this uh, late winter to prune the ones that are already growing, because I think they're about due for just a light pruning of the lower branches. Yeah, I agree. Do you think we can take the, there's fencing around both of them. Do you think it, it's too early to take the fencing away or leave the fencing? Leave it. Um, probably leave it just you know, all kinds of wildlife scrape up against it and probably leave it on as long as we can. Okay. I've, I've had deer scrape up trees that I've left here around the house until they're, you know, they can be a couple inches in diameter and they're still wanting to come up against them and scratch with their antlers. Okay, all right. So do you want me to table this and maybe, um... So I don't know. Let's, let's bring, put it, bring it up again um, till February. Yeah, February. We, we know we'll know. We should know by then. Okay. You know, yeah. What the sign is, you know, what the actual cost of the signs is going to be, and and that. Okay. I, don't, I don't think that I don't. I don't think we're going to have a problem with money unless something no. you know, catastrophic happens. <laughs> we should. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, remember, we still have. $3,500 if we have to buy material, material for, yeah, for, so. for, for repairs. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's, that's over, but that was, that was, you know, estimated to uh, replace uh, things as they needed replacement over a period of time too. So we don't want to spend it all in one place. Um, but right. yeah, so I don't think we, I don't think we, I don't think money's going to be a concern this year um, as it was last year. Well, I don't think it was, I mean, we could it make a, we could make a motion to buy two tonight, even, and it's just a matter of where we would end up planting them. I guess that's not a big deal. Yeah. Um, you know, we're definitely going to plant it somewhere out there, close to the parking area, um, next to near the other tree, right? Yeah. Should, we, these are, should uh, we just make a motion? How are they described? Are they hybrid or, or they're what are their? Yeah, they're hybrid. I mean, they're they're hybrid dyes so that they're resistant to chestnut disease yeah yep and but they do produce chestnuts good for wildlife you know um so do we want to make a motion then to at least move forward to order them i mean what it would happen is i'd probably have to order them with my credit card and get reimbursed okay. i would i would order them now yeah sure the well, okay I would. Okay. We, we're actually not. planning to buy some ourselves. So if you wanted, um, I could purchase them and get reimbursed myself, and then we could just get them shipped all together. Um, how would it, Jackie, if you purchase them more than the two in terms of reimbursing you, maybe Carol could have a better idea of this. When you submit your receipt, it's mm -hmm. going to show the ones you purchased as well, though. How would we work that out? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to think about... Um... Because uh, you know, usually most of the stuff we buy, um, we buy from places where the town has accounts, and that takes care of the issue of sales tax and that kind of stuff. Um, so um, I don't know how. Okay, just if it was easier that way, I could do it. Okay. Yeah, I, you know, I just uh, more difficult. That's fine. Well, you know, the good thing about it, though, Jackie, is if if you did it, if you ordered them all, the shipping charge um per per would be cheaper you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. you want to look into that and and just yeah see. look into what the pricing would be and then you know can just yeah divide well, it. how about it then we table that till next can we, could we table that till next month yeah that would give yeah. time for to figure yeah, to sort out the logistics of it and yeah. and then we, and then we'll know what we're getting in for okay good all right uh moving on to the knowlton preserve um, I have no new updates about Knowlton. Um, everything seemed good out there last time we walked. And uh, Talmadge track, the, the original, 
um, everything looked pretty good. I know that Bill and Kathy Bland, who are the stewards, are still planning to put the hardware cloth down on the bridge. I they haven't done it yet, so it's still something on their list to do. Town development. Um, Bob, do you have any updates on planning and zoning um, that are relevant to us? No, well, I guess the only thing it, what uh, moved forward is the uh, parking lot for uh, FedEx. Mm -hmm. um, the, uh, the group that was working with FedEx uh, to uh, move forward with that parking lot, they had gone to the, uh, uh, the engineers, the uh, Army Corps of Engineers, and there was just too much red tape to uh, <laughs> facilitate swapping uh, property. And uh, so they, uh, they got the approval for a uh, parking lot for extra uh, semi-trailers uh, next to where the uh, buses are parked. Um, there was... Uh, a number of concerns. Um, the uh, property slopes down towards the bus lot, which means their retention basins and such are going to be there. Any overflow eventually is going to get into that brook. And uh, there was quite a bit of conversation just with them inquiring about uh, planted swales and uh, making sure that uh, the flow rate would be slow enough so that the water could interact with the uh, plant material to facilitate uh, the start, the process of starting to break down the organics that come off of that uh, asphalt. Um, we also touched on uh, lighting, not exactly sure if they need lights on that uh, whole area. And uh, there was some conversation but again their preliminary uh, drawings they weren't really sure how f much further back they were going to have to blast into that uh, uh, rock ledge in the back uh, I believe it's going to be substantial uh, so uh, that's what we got uh, one of the things that they said they FedEx was committed to was to leaving the uh, buffer of trees between their parking lot and Ruby Road. All they were going to need is uh, just a, an entrance and exit uh, for their trailers. And there was quite a bit of conversation on PZC's part about uh, concerns about the twisting character of that road and uh, moving uh, semis, uh, boxes up and down there uh, with, in, with people's interaction as it is with uh, trailers on that. Uh, most of the trailers will be uh, short boxes. They usually haul doubles, short doubles. So we probably won't see uh, 50 foot uh, boxes parked there. It should be all those shorter boxes. And they haven't come back to us with the uh, plans yet. Um, I imagine that won't happen in, for another month or two. Yeah, Bob, um, where is, is this located immediately adjacent to, to immediately north of the uh, property the, the, where the buses are parked? The, That's the, correct. The, the Younger Wren property? I don't know whose property it is, but it's that property right north yeah, of the bus park. park. Yeah, the park that, that was given to the town to for as a location for a school, curiously enough, far if you go far enough back to the original D. Yeah. So it's, it's it borders that property directly. Right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The, the parcel now is like an old sand and gravel operation. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Okay. Um, Anything else? Um, I'm thinking about what's going on. Uh, the cannabis shop, uh, cannabis shop, if nobody knows, is going in where the old bank was at Phelps Plaza <laughs> at the end. Um, 
they're going to use the bank area and the dance studio that was uh, ad uh, directly adjacent to it. Um, and they're just now, uh, they I guess they finished working on their lease agreement uh, with the folks that own the plaza now. And uh, I was talking to the new owner of the uh, spirit shop there. He was saying that there's been several contractors in and out uh, looking and uh, they're working up some plans. Um, I, the best idea is it's probably open sometime late this summer. Okay, all right. Anything else related more to conservation issues? Anything else? That uh, no, uh, long-term. Um, Economic developments working with a produce wholesaler uh, to put in a uh, rail siding on at uh, Desiato's old uh, gravel uh, pit. That entrance is just down from uh, Hilltop Restaurant on the oh, okay. uh, right hand side. Uh, they're working with a railroad company right now. Um, so right hand side going which direction, Bob? <laughs> so, uh, going towards uh, uh, South Wellington. So, oh, okay, so it's uh, on the on the uh, rivers riverside. Hmm. Yeah, Desi Otto's been hauling gravel out of there for decades. Yeah, right. Thanks, Bob. Sure. Um, I don't have any other information from you know inland wetlands um, at this point. Collaborative Organization News and Communication. I submitted some information about the new Talmadge Estate Parcel and the grant to the Thames River Basin Partnership. Uh, they're the regional partnership that the town of Wellington belongs to um, because of Fenton River, Fenton, um, the Fenton River going into the Thames River watershed. Um, we participate with them and just updated them about that because the parcels in that watershed. Um, pollinator pathway initiatives. Uh, there's a regional uh, group that meets uh, every couple of months online. And last year, they had some events where they were giving away seeds and seedlings. Um, and they're working on some of that again this year. It may be something that we can help in terms of getting the word out to our residents uh, once they you know, have their event scheduled so that people learn more about pollinators. As you know, the Girl Scouts did a lot last year with the gardens and they've got information on our website now and they're working with um, the pollinator pathway group that's more national and they're going to have, Willington will have our name listed under towns in Connecticut that participate in pollinator pathways. And there will be a link from their national website that will go to our website and it will open with all that information that the Girl Scouts uh, provided to us. So, hmm. so we're on the pathway. Open space opportunities. So last we talked about a parcel on Burma Road. Um, and a couple of things, I had a meeting with uh, the first selectman, the town attorney, uh, Mike D'Amato from Land Use and Public Works, Troy from Public Works, about the road status, that part of Burma Road. And as far as can be determined at this point, um, it doesn't appear that the roads were ever officially abandoned. So Burma Road was uh, beyond the park, uh, is not been maintained for years. And um, neither has Lustig Road, where it connects with Burma Road up in that area, nor Amadon Road, which is right at the corner of Burma. As Burma takes a left by this property we've been discussing, Amadon Road keeps going straight. Um, mm -hmm. Again, it's just an old, it's an old path, and it goes to Ashford. But none of those, as far as we could determine from talking to Public Works in Ashford, Nothing's been officially abandoned on their side either, but neither towns have been maintaining these roads for years. 
And the survey that was done in 1998, when the current owner purchased that seven acre parcel off of Burma, the survey does mention that there's signage on Burma Road that says uh, road not maintained. So when they purchased the property, they knew at the time that the roads were not maintained. Um, they would come in from Lustig and drive onto Burma because Lustig turns into Burma right at the Ashford Willington line. And then they would proceed to their property, which was a couple hundred feet beyond that. So that's the way they used to come in. But Lustig Road now has several large trees down across it. And those would have to be removed for the current owner to be able to drive a vehicle down to their property. So that's what we determined when we talked to the first selectman and the attorney. Um, I, my understanding was that if the property was ever, if they ever tried to develop the property and needed to get down to the property, the town's position would be that they would basically say, the road is not maintained, if you're going to you know, use it, it's, it's a right of way, you have a right of way on it, but you'll have to maintain it. So that's the position I understood that the town would take um, if the current owner or a future owner you know, tried to develop that parcel. So Bob and I also, went, the same day that we walked up the hayfield with Troy, um, we talked to Troy about going down to look at that parcel on Burma Road to look at the old camp, to see what it would take to remove that camp. For example, if the Conservation Commission and the town were interested in offering to purchase that property, we'd have to remove the old camp and fill in the well because it would just be open space. So we'd have to do that. So when Troy looked at it, he thought that in terms of what it would cost for his department, he said, could do that. They could take the old camp down and fill in the foundation and the well. He thought in terms of manpower hours, it would cost about $3,000 from his budget. And um, I did reach out with Erica's permission to Carl Asimovic, who's the town's engineer. And I asked him about the dam um, and whether or not that was something that he thought should be checked before the town should consider, you know, even looking into buying this parcel. And he said that he thought that was important to do and that he was available and very able to do that and would cost $350 of his time to do that. So that's kind of where um, the updates that I have about that particular parcel have not gotten back in touch with the landowner at this point um, and just wanted to get your opinions about what we might want to do next if we're interested in the parcel. So. Well, I, I've expressed my position to you, Kathy, and uh, I, I, I think for the right price, uh, it's uh, something that would be a good thing to acquire to uh, keep uh, development out of the upper part of the uh, park. Um, but again, at, at a, a, a fair price right. and uh, you know, quote unquote, fair price is a sliding scale as we, as you and I were talking today considering that 40 acre parcel that just sold right next to the park. Mm -hmm. uh, and- Which one know, was that, uh, which one was that, Bob? One on the one that on Peter the had uh, contacted the gentleman from uh, Glassenbury. Mm -hmm. His mother had owned it for years. He and wanted to put it- Is that the one on Tinkerville or? Tinkerville, Tinkerville Listig. Yeah. Uh, at right the corner the of Tinkerville and Listig, where they were, they at one time proposed just chopping up the top of the hill so they could put develop it. Right. That, that's the one. No. That's so the that, same parcel that the landowner contacted us about the trespass, Carol. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so okay. Good. That 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 was the owner, not the other owner. We've right. been having trouble. Um, but you know, before, um, sorry, Bob, I forgot to mention no. one other thing. When. Um, 
I was trying to figure out how do we get an idea of what this parcel would go for on the open market without having to go through a formal appraisal, you know, paying for a formal appraisal. So I did contact um, Kara Fishman, who's now our tax assessor, and um, I just got her general opinion about what this parcel might be valued at because the appraisal on it is $70,000. And she actually, you know, I did this, I left her a message like a week ago and she actually went out and walked, she said, to look at the parcel. And she told me that she feels on, on the, like a market value would be between $1,500 and $2,000 an acre which multiplied by seven acres would be, you know, like $14,000. And I said, really? I said, you know, the landowner spent $50,000 on it in 1998. I, you know, they, I'm sure they overpaid for it, but, you know, if she went to a realtor and they put this on the market, you think that's all she could get? And she says, because it's considered kind of landlocked because the towns don't maintain the roads, she felt that that would be kind of the market value of it. So, you know, <clears throat> I mean, I, it's, it's, a, it's a challenging thing because she's not giving us a set price, but she's also telling us that she can't give it away. Um, and we already know how much they paid for it. Um, but I, I think what we need to understand, Kathy, is what the asking price was on that 40, 000, 40 acre piece and what they ended up paying for it. Right. So. What was that? What's the story on that, Bob? The, the, the 40 acre piece, when I first saw it uh, last fall, it was listed for about 280 or 285,000 for the 40 acres. And Kathy says that she saw uh, what it sold for at 150. No, actually, um, excuse me, Bob. It was 125,000. If you look on the oh, okay, of uh, the GIS map, GIS they have yeah. uh, they show the um, information about the new owner, and it shows what the uh, okay the, the price, price was. was. It was so, so that that that's the price difference, Carol. You know. Yeah. Yeah, they, right. So that's about three thousand dollars an acre, you know, a little more than three thousand mm -hmm. dollars an acre, okay. forty acres for one hundred twenty-five thousand. Mm -hmm. um, and that's got road frontage on two roads. Yeah, yeah, it's a much more attractive parcel and much more accessible. The other parcel is is really um, it is it is um, almost inaccessible. And and undevelopable, for any if for to any extent because of the, the lack of uh, power lines. Right. 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 Um, for development, so. Though. But, so uh, yeah, how do we proceed? I mean, first of all, let me ask this question, um, Carol. I know you've been out to the property. Actually, Nora, you and I and uh, Chris and Mark had taken a walk the other day, and we we did go by, and so Nora's seen it. Um, Bob, you're familiar with it. Yep. Jackie, have you been out that way? No, I haven't been out there. Okay. Um, I mean, I think from a, it has a lot of benefits to add it onto the park because it kind of sews things up. It's like that missing puzzle piece mm -hmm. and it's got a, a nice pond plus a nice big open wetland pond. Um, so there's a lot of water on the property. It's really good for wildlife habitat. Um, I could see somebody considering it for 40,000. <clears throat> really, uh, okay. that's my gut feeling. The other thought that, that uh, Dave had was if the pond is there uh, and it's part of the park, um, are there, and it's so isolated from, from the rest of the park, um, does that is there any chance that that pond becomes an attractive nuisance and uh, and a, and a, a you know a liability for that reason? It used to be Carol when the <clears throat> before the pines grew up where the camp is mm -hmm. there used to be a field 
from the camp right yeah, down right to, to the, the uh, oh. edge of the pond. But that's all grown up now. And the pines are, you know, three, four inches through and they're every two feet. And uh, so it's pretty inaccessible. So, you know, the, uh, the draw that was there at one point, and I'm sure that's why it was so attractive when they bought it, uh, it it's pretty much overgrown now. And the accessibility to the pond. <laughs> the I know I've walked it. Great. <laughs> yeah. But still, you know, there, you know, it, it, it is a, a fairly remote location in terms of, of our being able to monitor it as part of the park. I think it would be a great addition to the park. It Sorry would. if you can't hear yeah. me. I think it, yeah, it would. I think it, 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 it would blend in nice. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think as far as liability, I mean, we can't prevent anybody from like jumping in Taylor Pond in the middle of the night and drowning. You know, we can't. <laughs> yeah exactly True. we know that yeah. it's probably unlikely people are going to camp there but um <laughs> but yeah <laughs> i mean from a i'm not sure that that no, just a no it's a good question yeah yeah anyway i think it would be a great addition to the park it well it, yeah it's it's it is it would be nice um the question is how do we proceed i mean we know it's not going to take tons of money to take the house out or, you know, check the dam out. Um, I mean, do we talk to the landowner and say, this is basically what we think we could recommend to the town to, to pay for the parcel, you know, do we be, yeah. give them yeah. a figure and then they can say, no, that's, that's too low. We're going to put it on the market and see what we can get. Well, they can always make another offer. You know, if you offered them say, you know, 40,000, maybe you should come back and say, well, can you do 45 or 47? Or, mm -hmm. you know, and then you can counter and say, well, I could, we maybe halfway between, you know, you know, just kind of barter back and forth. You deal with those New Englanders up north. You know how it's done, Kathy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. <laughs> now, yeah. this is, yeah, these circumstances, unfortunately, I think they're, uh, the, they're, it's a, somewhat unique situation in terms of the the circumstances under which this is coming to be sold and um and what the, the seller's needs are right but we also you know uh, we represent the town and the town's people's you know yeah. money in that sense so i don't think we should offer them oh no or because no. of her situation, I mean. No, no, no. I'm not no. suggesting that, Kathy. I'm suggesting that that it may be difficult, more difficult to negotiate, mm. um, yeah. because for for that reason. So I think that's something to take into consideration. Um, and uh, the longer it hangs out there unresolved, you know, the more that may have that may make a difference, also. Yeah. But I I don't think we need to. I don't know that there's an, is it being actively advertised? No, I mean, her concern is that she really can't advertise it easily because no one can drive down there. I mean, that's <laughs> not, that's not, a, I mean, um, you know, there's land, there's land that's landlocked in other places where people would have to walk over other property or walk down a dirt road to get to it. But um, that's one of her concerns is that, you know, she doesn't have, she doesn't feel she can market it well if the, if the roads aren't open yeah, yeah. Right. i mean she basically the the town of ashford did say they'd be willing to go and take the trees out and so that she could access the property um you know we could say to her this is what we think we can recommend you know if you don't feel that it's uh anywhere near what you would consider then you know you you could always put it on the market and see what happens yeah. So how much is she asking? She well, you know, again, I think because the appraisal is $70,000, I, she didn't say exactly. She just, you know, originally that's kind of what her father told Peter. If you guys remember when her husband first passed away, yeah, her father approached Peter and said she wanted to sell it. And, you know, it was appraised at 70,000. And I and I asked that's a realistic appraisal is is highly debatable. 
our current assessor says no, it's not. No. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. She she said she might even look into reappraising it. I mean, it won't affect a lot of what they pay for taxes because it's currently um, four ninety. It's in four ninety. Yeah. Well, yes, yeah. under open space, and I think the taxes, um, not the appraisal, but the um, assessment is like four, maybe $4,000 or less. So. Okay, so we have a very low threshold for open space. Yeah. yeah. Can you tell her what the assessor said and, and just see where she goes from that? Just throw it out to her and we I, go from there? I, I guess I could. I could tell her this is the information we have to date that we have to go on and, you know, and it, would, and it would be nice to keep it as open space and yeah. part of our park. Yeah, good. Yeah. Well, hey, Kathy. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, I mean, you, I think you can just, you know, kind of a three pronged attack. You know what the assessor said. Maybe we could come to a consensus in so far as what we would be willing to max out at. And uh, if it works out, it works out. If it doesn't work out, I mean, you can tell her what the assessor says, and then, you know, you can have a little conversation and, you know, uh, tell her what, you know, what, what we're willing to, uh, to pay, you know, uh, and maybe horse trade the last few thousand. And if it's not, uh, if that's not doable, you know, you walk away. Right. Maybe we should have been going after the 40 acre parcel, <laughs> which also abuts the park. <laughs> Unfortunately, well, that, missed an opportunity there. And that's one of the things that uh, Kathy and I brought to the uh, CIP group is we even haven't even got the money. I mean, as soon as that came on the market and it was, you know, 200 and some thousand dollars, that's $200,000 less than they were asking for it uh, 10 years ago. Yeah. And uh, it even went for less than that. But we, we haven't got the ability to uh, jump into the fray. Yeah. So exactly. it puts us that, on the outside looking in. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's why, you know, I don't want to wait too long because, I mean, if she puts us on the open market, there might be somebody out there willing to pay more than it's worth because they're yeah. going to keep it as a camp. You know, yeah. they're going to either improve that camp or tear it down and build something else there at some point. Um, so they're going to be willing to spend more on it than we would because we're just using it as open space. But I ultimately, whatever we agree to with the landowner, we're going to have to go to the town and say, OK, we're recommending this. And if they say, well, how did you come up with this price? You know, this, according to the, you know, if they, somebody talks to the assessor, the assessor saying, you know, it's really only worth about, you know, $2,000 an acre. Um, if we negotiate something like say 30 or $40,000 with her, is somebody from the town going to say you're overpaying for it? You know, those are, that's the tricky part here as well. Yeah. The, the, you know, the best you can do, the best we can do is have a conversation with the uh, selectman, have another conversation with the assessor, uh, mention that it's a key piece. I mean, this this piece is similar to the- uh, Talmadge. The Talmadge piece. It, yeah. it, it finished off the road. You know, we put the puzzle together, but we were missing one piece. Mm -hmm. And this, we find ourselves in the same situation with this. So was the parcel worth $125,000? Absolutely. I mean, just the three building lots they could have got out of it was the, the money was more than there. And with us here looking at that, well, let's keep that top part of the park as we enjoy it now. Um, what's that worth? Well, that has a value. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, we just have to get comfortable with that and have a conversation this, of the same with this last piece of the puzzle with the first select woman and the assessor so they 
get a better understanding of how we're viewing it. Okay. Great. Do people feel that's a good next move? I can contact Erica and Kara and see if we can set up a meeting and just talk about it from that, from some of the issues we're talking about tonight. I, I, I would, I, I, I'd set you on it. Yeah. Great. Carol, do you have a, do you want to weigh in on that? No. Okay. All right. Okay, well, um, give you an update next time. I'll see what I can do to get in touch with Erica and Karen, and set something up and just see, you know, if they have some thoughts too on, you know, the best way to manage this, we don't want to insult the woman, but we also don't want to pay more than the property oh. is worth. So, okay. But people are in general agreement, as I'm hearing you, that you all feel that adding this on to the park would be a good thing. Yes. Okay. Carol, you have thoughts on that? Do you, one way or the other? I have, I still have mixed feelings about it. Um, but you know, it, and it, and it depends on a lot of, var of variables. So, um, any, so. any particular variables? No, I don't. I, okay. I'm interested. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, any other ideas on open space opportunities? Is anybody aware of anything out there? Um, I did mention to Bob um, tonight that I it's my understanding that the person that owns the farm on Lustig Road, that it's adjacent to the park. Um, it's, I don't know how many of you are familiar with that part of Lustig Road, but the property is closest to Julia's trail, excuse me, to Taylor Pond trail. Um, that person passed away. The um, older gentleman and his wife, I guess, live on the property. And Bob thinks that there's a, a family member that lives across the street. Um, so I don't know the status of that parcel. It's uh, 39 acres. I did check it tonight. Um, so it does have a farmhouse on it, but most of it is is open and uh, like hay fields. So and and forest, the backside of its forest that is close to um, Taylor Pond Trail. So again, might be worth keeping our ears open to see if there's going to be any move in the future of somebody wanting to sell that property. So. Well, if there's if there's family members that should be con might be we might put feelers out too. Yeah, it, you know, again, this is the hard part, Carol. Is it's so hard. I mean, we can ask people what their thoughts on it. I wouldn't approach them right now because this man. No, no, it. not me. Yeah, it. but at some point, um, because you don't know, you don't know the family situation. If you don't know the family situation and, and whether they they're interested in making keeping the pro the property that sort of thing so. yeah all right anything else right. Oh. Uh, meeting schedule for 2023 um i had sent you the schedule uh that we had decided last meeting that we would continue to meet on the third wednesday of each month at seven o'clock via zoom um so i sent you that meeting schedule and uh, just need uh, to vote on it tonight. Anybody want to make a motion to approve the meeting schedule as written for 2023? Uh, still moved. Second. Thanks, Nora. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Opposed? Abstain? Okay. Thanks, Jackie. So moved. Okay. Um, officers, 2023. Um, so I'm very willing to continue to serve as chairperson, if you'll have me. Um, Carol, are you continuing? Would you like to continue as treasurer? Um, for the moment, yes. Okay. Um, do we have anybody? 
else interested in any of the positions I just mentioned or secretary? No. Okay. We really need we really need to have some people step up, folks, or the commission's going down, going to go down the tubes. I hate to say that, but that's it's that's this is really important. Some of the jobs are not that burdensome. Some of the things can be done on a rotate if people aren't willing to step forward, at least on a rotating basis to do the secretarial stuff. Kathy should not be doing minutes every meeting along with everything else she's doing, and um, you know it's. We're, we, as it is, we don't have a full complement on the commit, commission. We're short one regular member and um, and two alternates. And um, as we as we're talking about expanding the park and doing this kind of stuff, we we really need to either be recruiting some other folks or or um, having people be willing to to contribute a little bit more um, to making the commission run. Um, smoothly, so just you know, and, and I know and, uh, people have uh, have their own personal needs and, and situations, but um, but it, that I think that's just a reality that we're facing as we move forward. So, yes. and I'm not going to be doing this forever. So, I may not be doing this for long. Okay, guys. Um, well, continue to give us some thought because at any point, um, if people want to step into positions, um, you know, we can uh, make a motion to do that. Um, I think we probably should just make a nomination, uh, move to nominate it, myself as chair and Carol as treasurer, you know, just for the record. Somebody want to make that motion? So moved. Okay, second. Second. Thanks, Jackie. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Any opposed? Okay. Everybody said yes. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. New business communications. There was nothing in our mailbox. Um, don't have any other communications from anybody. Uh, Wellington Wire article. I submitted one for. Um, the winter uh, edition of Willington Wire. And I basically um, just talked a little bit more about the trails on all of the properties and you know how to enjoy them in winter. Um, our next Willington Wire article, it's just a one pager, uh, is due for March 17th. That will encompass uh, April, May, and June, the months. And I wondered if anybody would be interested or willing to consider writing a one page article. It's just basically Conservation Commission news. It can be, you know, about anything you want it to be, really, anything environmental or talk about farmland in town or, you know, anything. It can be any kind of a, an article to put in for the, the wire. Let me think about it. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Okay. Great. And like I said, it wouldn't be due until March 17th. And um, the past Willington wires, I believe some of them are online and I have old articles as well um, from the past. Okay. So if you're interested, I can send you some of those older ones if people wanna look at them to see, you know, kind of what the format is. Yeah, all right. Okay. I'm not promising, but I'll see if I can get some thoughts together. Okay, great. And if anybody wants to think forward for other Wellington wires that'll be coming up, they're done quarterly. And um, so, you know, if you if there's something in particular you'd like to write about or you have some information you'd like to share that the Conservation Commission should be sharing with the town, um, you know, that's the time to do it. New business other, I don't have anything. Does anybody have anything new they wanted to bring up or put on the agenda? Yeah, Nora. Just that Bob, Bob gave me back the uh, job of filling the um, Ben Ruby Park Trail maps and stuff, but he doesn't have any more left. So I need some more maps. Okay. And the uh, Taylor Pond guys. Okay. Sorry. If you can't hear. I have 
I have I have some of um I think I have some I'll check I think I have some um park brochures and I and there but there are Taylor Pond uh, trail guides at the town office building I know we have a supply of those in the cabinet in the file cabinet there how many would you need Nora? I can't do anything until next week sometime in terms of um, I have none so as many as you can give me I can just keep them here but it's just the Fenton, Fenton, Fenton Ruby the green ones and the Taylor Ruby. Pond guides yeah guys yeah, it, it'll be next week before I can do anything about that. I'll look around to Nora and see if I have any um, at home that I can give to you as well. I'll get them to you if I do. Okay. All right, any other other? <laughs> yeah. No, Bob? Um, I don't know, instead of putting those guides out, can you just put a QR code out and just have it have them scan it with their phone and just have them load it up onto their phone. You know what, Bob? What it bothers me about that? I know people love their phones, but you know what? I'd like to see people walking in the park without phones. <laughs> people are <laughs> sorry. I, I I appreciate the QR codes and I know people like them, but uh, but there's just something about me that wants people to just go out and enjoy nature unencumbered. <laughs> Um, and so, you know, but <laughs> yes, I agree with you. It's, it would be nice to have QR codes, but not at the expense of, of, you know, having something that they could also take away with them and maybe pass on to somebody else, which might interest somebody else to come into the park, um, that sort of thing. So, well, I think the beavers are using them to um, find their lodge. <laughs> they just seem to be disappearing. <laughs> Oh, no. oh, yeah. So somebody must be be using them. I and I don't I don't know what. <laughs> uh, so that, I think that there have been there have been a lot of people out at the park, and and so I think that's you know it may be old fashioned, but it's it's also a way of of a, a, another way of of spreading the word, mm -hmm. and and um, they are they do disappear, which means it, it, we assume that people aren't taking them just to to tear up and throw away, or um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're inexpensive too. Yeah, too. Good news is, I mean, I don't think I've ever seen them disposed of on the trail. You know, no, people, no. if they don't take them, they do return them uh, to the boxes. <laughs> yeah, the Taller Pond Trail Guides, you know, they're good about, people are good about returning those for reuse. Um, yeah. But the uh, but the, uh, the park brochures too, you know. Uh, mm. yeah, just a suggestion. No, no, I think I think there's a place for both, Bob, to have the, the yeah. and, Oh yeah. And, yeah, and, and I know the paper is disposable, but um but it's it's uh, I don't know. Well it it's certainly what a lot of the um the land trusts and so on are doing now because they just don't have the time and the resources to keep restocking those um box trail boxes and stuff. I mean it's you could do both. I mean, you could put a QR code out there for those that want it, and then have the paper copies for those who want it as well. Yeah, and the but the the QR code covers the map, um, but it it um, you know there may be some people who are also interested in the history of the park, and that and that information is not available, and um, you know in the in the same way, not available. Um, and and maybe of the historic, there are a lot of people who are, are interested in the history of the properties, um, yep. and and that aspect of the of the the park as well. So um, you know, it's a that's something to consider. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. So if there's nothing else that people wanted to share or add to the agenda tonight, I think we can uh, move to adjourn. So moved. Okay. Second. 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 Okay. Thank you. All right. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. And yeah. uh, have a good rest of the week and uh, a good one. Thank you. Okay. Bye, guys. Good seeing, good seeing everyone. You too. Good to see you. Have a good night.
Hope you feel yeah. better. Yeah, me too. <laughs>